Did the city of Boston just decriminalize crime? What else is going on here? Because this news is going viral. You know, if the police don't want to take care of it, then me and the boys in Saudi will just have to. Oh, we got to talk about this, Andrew. Uh, this is a viral title right now on a lot of right-wing news outlets. Boston Democratic mayor says criminals should not be prosecuted for theft. Gang registry should be abolished. Hold on, but guys, we do need to know because this... This headline has a lot of people emotional because it sounds like that the Boston mayor, Michelle Wu, is being super left, being pro-crime, letting all these people go. But actually, that's not the case. If you read closer into the article, David, what else does it say? Well, long story short, Andrew, this is based off of a survey she filled out when she was running for mayor in 2021. Obviously, it was a different time then, but she did say that uh, there were certain charges to be declined for prosecution, including trespassing, shoplifting, larceny under $250, disorderly conduct, disturbing the peace, receiving stolen property, et cetera, et cetera. Let me just pop that up. Drug possession. And basically a lot of things that people have said that have ruined LA and San Francisco and Seattle. A lot of people in Boston are like, no, 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 not in our great city. Right. Not mayor, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. So this was something that she said she would do when the headline says that she wanted to do this. It is what she intended to do before she won, before she was elected. Back in 2021, she was filling out this progressive questionnaire. And in my opinion, I think she was maybe overstating what she wanted to do so that she could win the progressive left vote. Right. Because as she got into her mayor seat, uh, she didn't actually do all those things. She did some of them, but not all those things. Right, right, right. Well, actually, one of the headlines says Boston mayor pledged to support radical pro-crime agenda later backpedaled. Right. And interestingly enough, Andrew, when a bill did come across her desk, when she did become mayor, she vetoed it. And hyper left progressive groups were calling her a sellout for being more centrist once she got the position. Right, so just as people think right now that, wow, Boston is decriminalizing all this theft and larceny and stuff like that, it's like, no, that is kind of what she said she wanted to do, but actually Boston is not in chaos right now. The shootings are down, but there is theft that is up, but that's really just because uh, theft is up everywhere, guys. So, yeah, anyway, we're going to get into it, guys. I see both sides of this issue. I'm going to break it down the best way that I can, the Seven points that are here today. Point number one, Andrew, a lot of people are saying Democrats continue to wonder why Trump is so popular. They have literally pushed any centrists and moderates into his camp with this type of stuff. Mm. Do you think it's true that obviously there was a movement for the past, what, like, let's just say four years since 2021. A lot of people um, in cities like Portland, Seattle, maybe SF, where these policies, Andrew, that she said she was going to enact actually got enacted they're sick of it. Yeah, in certain cities, uh, super lenient, um, I guess, uh, initiatives were enacted and it's not turning out good. Like Portland is pulling back from the whole like, hey, let's not prosecute hard drugs, right? They were like letting it just fly. They were like, all right, people just do drugs, whatever drugs no, you want, just Portland, do it. Portland, I think, had a program to give people free alcohol. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But now they're pulling back from that, obviously, because it's just it's kind of not working. And so luckily, I think to Mayor Wu's uh, credit though, she didn't actually do some of those things. Yeah, she was a little bit more moderate in execution than what she said to right. win, right? Trust me, there are people on the very, very far left who are criticizing her for not being left enough. And actually she had to change some of her like different policies. Anyway, I'll just pop that up. She had to come back and say, you know, well, we had to reevaluate after two years, these programs were not working. Right, right, right. Point number two, Andrew, Boston was kind of one of the less de last Democrat cities that almost felt not in chaos. Would mm. you agree? Because Boston has this reputation in a weird way. It's, it's famous for kind of like being racist too right. towards minorities. But it's like they're, they're, they basically have not done what SF did, even though it's the Seattle or Boston same latitude. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I think that... I don't know. I think Boston's still relatively safe. I know that theft is up for stores, but that's because theft is up everywhere. But the fatal shootings are down under the new mayor, Mayor Wu. So, you know, I just want to be clear because I know a lot of people, they initially, they hear the headline and they're like, oh my gosh, Boston's going to crap. And it's like, well, you don't even like, you, especially if you don't live in Boston, that's not 
you don't know what's right, going right. on. Right, right. We there. have to be fair because only right wing news outlets posted this reveal of the 2021 right. mayoral multiple choice survey. Let's be honest. Fox News did it in a timely manner to ruffle up all the feathers because it's political season and they wanted more points against the left. This is right. why Fox News By the News way, posted. not saying that I would run Boston the way Michelle Wu runs right. Boston. If I, you know, right. if I was in charge, I certainly wouldn't make the same decisions that she did. Um, a lot of people are saying, point number three, Andrew, this is what happens when you try to apply the theories that, they, that you get taught in college versus the actual application in the real world. Mm. Do you think that this is true where a lot of people right now are saying like, oh yeah, you've got all these ultra educated people in SF and Seattle enacting these policies about like how to solve societal ills, but literally they just don't work. They're just theories that when you apply them to actual human nature on the ground and how it plays out, it just doesn't work. Yeah. Listen, uh, I, I will quote, Andrew Yang, because this is what he's been saying right now, because I always keep up with what Andrew Yang is saying. And he's really pushing that poverty, which is considered the root of a lot of these issues, poverty, right? The issues, you know, it's the root of crime and or most of the crime. Poverty is the most solvable of the major issues that we have. That's what Andrew Yang says. He's making the case. He's he always been saying that. So do you think that's the most systemic core yeah reason. of the major issues that you can actually change poverty is the most solvable is what he's saying because it's a matter of money well, and there's money a, and there's a lot of money in america and money is something that actually you can get it's hard to change people's minds and it's hard to change people's families it's hard to change people's culture but you can change how much money they have but all the money is going to missiles well, you need missiles, yeah, I guess. Well, yeah, of course, the other side is going to argue, well, you guys don't know, but the missiles keep you safe in a far a bird's eye view that you can't understand, regular citizen. <laughs> Point number four, Andrew, decriminalizing crimes, which was the movement in 2021, it does in 2024, and the way things have, I guess, shifted again, sound kind of crazy, right? Yes, How can you yeah, decriminalize yeah, yeah. crimes? Yeah, I, I mean, I think even a lot of Democrats, to be honest, they don't believe that you can decriminalize anymore. That was a very 2020-2021 idea. What I'm, a I'm time. Not I'll tell you no, this, I'm not going to lie, guys. That was very, very 2021 to be thinking that. Very few people think that nowadays. And you know what the funny thing is? Even in a lot of countries that are, that are quote unquote socialist or even communist, there's no connection between the economic system and their ability to decriminalize crime. Mm. Like, I'm saying that sometimes people are like, what do you mean? Like, I'm like, dude, even in like other places, they, they don't have the legal system connected to the economic system if one's wide open or, or locked down. Um, point number five, Andrew, a lot of people are saying that people who pass these policies are potentially NIMBYs, not in my backyard. There are people who are basically thinking as long as it doesn't happen to me, this is the right moral choice even though it may have a negative impact on other people. Mm. So basically, for example, Nancy Pelosi, Andrew, doesn't live in a district of San Francisco where she's impacted by any of the soft on crime policies that she's voting for. Right. Like I, she I, lives in a rich part in a hill with like guards and like hella security cameras and gates where it would never even be something that she has to think about. Yeah, I think it's really interesting now, like, to be a politician, it's like all these comments on the internet, people are breaking down and have all these theories about why you do what you do. And I think it is extremely, it is extremely tough to be a politician right now. It's right. tough. Yeah. It's really interesting. Um, I'll say this. If you run businesses in various neighborhoods, let's say, for example, you're a business owner and you have a large amount of your own personal net worth and capital involved in different neighborhoods, you know, not just one or the other. It's not like you just only own high-end furniture stores. You don't just own liquor stores or something like that. I'm talking about across the spectrum. You typically will have a better read than somebody who just got like three graduate school degrees and makes their money talking because you have a large amount of your personal investment tied up in the how society is running on a day-to-day -day basis and all uh, the application mm -hmm. of these top-down policies. Um, I'll say this, point number six, Andrew. America tends to really trend ride things to a 10 out of 10 extreme max level. When America feels emotional about something, it seems like they pass everything and then the society changes way over here and then people stop feeling that way and then all of a sudden society has to shift backwards. Why does America seem like it goes through such emotional swings through like the media and like music and how people are feeling? Right. 
I think that that is, I don't know, is that an American trait? That's a really good question. I, I think that that's something that actually needs further investigation. And point number seven, Andrew, there's a lot of people that are accusing progressives of trying to destroy America right now. And I'll tell you this. This is, you know, some people are going to be like, oh, this is centrist fun bros, always so centrist and neutral. I don't think the progressives and liberals are trying to destroy America. I think what they think they're doing is right. But the one thing that the left tends to be bad at, Andrew, is execution of the micro details. Mm. But sometimes the devil is in the details. Mm. You know what I mean? Like you can't just survive on ideologies or idealism of how you want, and it's great that you want to solve things through rehabilitation and, you know, more early school programs. So here's the interesting thing. The people, like, there's people who are caught up fighting liberals, right? But the liberals want the right thing, but their policies are essentially not working and ineffective. So what should happen, theoretically, if people only wanted to be centric on fixing the issues, is conservatives should take the liberals' ideas and execute them in a conservative way. But that's not going to happen either. Do you see what I'm saying? Because I'm saying the liberals, they might have the right idea. Yes, there needs to be more early, you know, education and rehabilitation and like a little bit more compassion. But since they're so bad at executing it, then they're just causing this other side to get super angry. But theoretically, on a pure logic basis level, the people who are good at executing should go in and execute the liberals ideas for them in a moderate way. Mm. And that way we can sort of reach like a middle ground compromise that keeps everybody relatively happy. Of course, it doesn't satisfy anybody either side to a 10 out of 10 level, mm. but maybe both sides will get a six out of 10. Right. But I'm saying right now, it's like a push and pull of a tug of war into both unideal zones because the other people, they want to just like punish the people without compassion. And then the left is trying to so, show so much compassion that it's just like gonna just cause cracks in society. So ultimately, man, I'll tell you this, man, Andrew Thomas Soul, there's a really famous quote. There are no free lunches. There are no solutions, only trade-offs. And I think it's so funny to me. Everybody loves Singapore, Andrew. Whether you're Asian and you want to live there, you want to visit and go see Changi Airport, mm -hmm. or you just like doing business with Singapore. Maybe you're a white guy in America or whatever guy, corporate guy, black guy, that you're just doing business with Singapore to make money. Mm -hmm. you, you love the existence of Singapore, but then how come everybody in America is also, also like, yeah, they don't have any freedom in Singapore. But I'm saying that that's because Singapore just decided that their economic growth was worth the trade-offs. Do Americans really know what they value the most? Do you really want the highest level security? Because then that might start to infringe on your freedoms. Or do you want medium level security? Are you going to be happy with that? Do you want that? Like, I don't know. You're saying Very like, tough. what is the slack or what is like the leash that people are willing to give? Right. Everybody's got different thresholds, man. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Like we said, guys, you know, by all accounts, I have people who are friends with Michelle Wu. She seems like a nice person. Not that I fully agree with her. But yes, this these articles were sort of trying to frame it like Michelle Wu was trying to make Boston that way. Like I said, she's been more, probably more moderate left in execution. But anyway, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Do not decriminalize crime. Completely illogical. Let us know in the comment section below. Until next time, we the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.